Kind of Funny Studios is brought to you by Deus Ex Mankind Divided, now available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. This new critically acclaimed entry into the Deus Ex universe once again has players taking on the role of Adam Jensen with an all-new arsenal of state-of-the-art weapons and augmentation. See what all the excitement is about at DeusExx.com. Colin. That's a great idea. For Mario World, it's a... Uh, well, Mario World's on my list. Mario so, World's on my list as well. So, I mean, I'll, I'll st- and mine's not in any order, I guess, either. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing that made Mario World special, and, and, and I've said this before, but Mar- to me, Mario World is by far the best launch game ever created, oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. by far the best bundled-in game ever created. So, not only like an ancillary game, but a first-party bundled-in game that people bought later on, which is the same with all the Mario games. And, and Nintendo really was was the marquee, I think, of great launch games. The original Super Mario Brothers um, is not technically maybe... Uh, we we look at like the old like Mario Bros, standard arcade Mario mm-hmm. Bros or like the old pixelated box art games is like really the first run, but for a lot of people's you know, initiation with NES, that the original Super Mario Brothers is a fantastic game. Like, Super Mario Brothers is a 10. Especially for its time, it is so much better than everything else that came out around it, which is unbelievable. It's not the first platformer or side scroller, but it's it's kind of like uh, Doom to Wolfenstein. You might look at like mm, Super Mario Brothers, like Pitfall or something like that. So, um, I really have a great deal of respect for Super Mario World because somehow they did it again. And what really is special about it is Super Mario Brothers three. When that game came out, I was like obsessed with it. I was absolutely obsessed with that game. Um, I was like seven, and I was I I just I loved 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 it. And when we got Mario World, we got an SNES when it came out, and my, Mario World, my brothers, yeah, you know, I was like, I was like, this is incredible because this is even better. Like, it's the same thing, it's the same world, but there are secrets and like more secrets than using like a whistle or like a key to like kind of find a, a to skip some stages or something mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, there's a ghost house, but if you beat it a certain way, then you like get this other area, and then there's like a star world, and and this is like, it was aside deep. how beautiful it was. Yeah, right? it was a pretty how, game. Yeah, it sounded great too. For the first time, too, there were real personalities with the bosses, which I thought was cool, um, like real personalities. And the maybe again, maybe with Mario, Two, if you want to count that with, you know, Wart did have, I guess, like there was some functionality with him and, and, and you know, it, it dream world. I don't know what it was. Birdo and-, and there was Birdo and who's, you know, my dude, but or my chick, depending. I think I think depending how you look at it. Yeah. So uh, I really loved Super Mario World because that game is really like you were saying, incredibly deep. For its time, 1991-ish, it's like, that's a really, really, really deep game and a really well-made game, and and um, that has to be on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to stay with my list for the other six games. Uh, I did a top 25 list, and we did our videos. I don't know what the fuck I said in the video. This list would change any given day, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are certain games that will always be in it. So um, Mega Man 3 is my favorite game of all time. I'm not going to belabor the point anymore. That's a perfect game in my mind. There's nothing wrong with that game. Uh, Why over 1 and 2 in the nutshell? One is uh, not really a very good like one's good, but one if you just played one Mega Man's heavier um, like he falls harder. Uh, it, that's like a real kind of tr- like you tried and uh, thank God you got Mega Man 2 like Mega Man 2 is a side project. They weren't even supposed to make that game and um, Mega Man 2 is a, is a fantastic game. If, if Mega Man 3 is a 10 Mega Man 2 is like a 9.9999. I mean, it's, it's okay. close, okay. you know, and I understand why people love Mega Man 2, but 3 is darker. Proto Man's in it, Rush is in it. Uh, it's the longest Mega Man game in the classic series by far. Uh, you fight all the bosses for Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3, which I think is awesome. Um, Wily like programs a guy, Dark Man or whatever his name is, is that like uses all of the, the like technology. And, and I love the art that they drew and if drew of him too where it has like he has like the weapons on his back basically mm. like and takes the arm cat that's awesome yeah and like yeah, there's cool stuff so you like you fight all the eight bosses and there's great bot Magnet Man's my favorite robot master in any of the games but there's Shadow Man and Snake Man and Gemini Man there are great guys in that Gemini Man is an awesome boss battle on the NES Capcom made a boss that split into two and ran around and it worked pretty well Nintendo uh, but uh it was a little bit actually slow down in that in that fight. Actually, it didn't run that well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was cool when you like I remember you know you were talking about playing erasing your memory with Mario World. Like I remember playing Mega Man Three for the first time. Like I remember getting it for Christmas, um, and uh, I was just blown away by it. And I remember getting through the figuring out the boss order, and then like we were gonna we're gonna go to Wily's Castle, but then it's like no like you fight now all the other eight, you have to go back to these stages, and they're all reworked and. 
you fight two bosses in each stage, one in the middle, one at the end, and they're the bosses. Like I remember like seeing like Quick Man or someone falling from the top and 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 embodying like the the, the Wily's new robot. I was like, this is fucking insane. Like as a kid, I'm like, yeah. this is so cool. And they never four, five, and six are great games too. And I think six specifically is a really underappreciated NES game. A late NES game, like we were talking mm-hmm. about, but um Three man is special, and what bothers me about three uh, as a fan is this, that Inafune, that's Inafune's least favorite one um, mm-hmm. because he didn't get enough time to, to work on it. And you could tell that there was supposed to be more. Like uh, um, three's intro music is like really long, but it just stays on the screen. You can tell yeah. they were supposed to have a cutscene in the beginning, and well, especially didn't. with two happening. Yes, yeah. thing. You know what's funny about this is comparing yours to my my list with uh, Mega Man three and Pokemon Gold and Silver. They're very similar. Uh, in that they were super ambitious in building off of the last one. Obviously, everyone loved Mega Man 2 so much. Mm-hmm. Everyone With loved good Pokemon reason. Red yeah. and Blue. And uh, you, bringing back all the original or the guys from 2 is such a, a cool, clever way to like, make people feel invested in the franchise and also remember the thing that they loved but tweaked a little bit different. Pokemon Gold and Silver, you face off against Red, the main character right. from the first ones at the end of it, which was mind-blowing. But also going back, it did feel empty. Like... Going back to Kanto was awesome and like super nostalgic and there was all these updates and stuff. But you definitely get the sense that they didn't have enough time to finish it because they turned those out so fast. So it's I didn't know about that about Mega Man 3. Yeah, there's like there's like it's not optimized. Like there is a lot of um like I'm used to playing it this way, but like in Spark Man stage, when you go back to it, there's like incredible amounts of slowdown. Like there's there's slowdown unlike I've ever seen in an NES game, but I just know how to play. When you use it to your advantage on top man stage when you fight the cats, like there's these huge gigantic cats, kind of like the dogs in Woodman stage that shoot the fire at you in Mega Man 2, which are kind of iconic. The game slows down. You can tell that they didn't get a chance to go back in and optimize the game, but the soundtrack is insane. I think Mega Man 3's soundtrack is super underrated. Everyone always talks about Mega Man 2, and, and Mega Man 2's soundtrack is awesome, and Wily Ca- Wily's castle music in Mega Man 2. I think Wily's music in Mega Man 3 is way better, and I, I feel like people don't... It's a super emotional and weird like in that respect. Um, the soundtracks, though, I think actually get better and better. Um, yeah, I mean, that's Mega Man's soundtrack overall is great. And I think that's what's really cool about it is you can take a song from each one of them, put them all together. They all, Mega Man has a, an, a musical aesthetic to it. You know, oh, I think yeah. that a lot of the, the games back then had that. And these days, you know, you, you get your Uncharted with its instrument group and your Halos and uh, obviously Final Fantasy. But besides that, or Mass Effect, but besides that, I think that uh, back then was special and Mega Man really pushed the sound capabilities of the NES and the Mega Man 3's intro song is epic. Yeah, you know? I agree. And I, I was, I've been playing Mega Man Legacy Collection doing like the really hard challenges and I was looking at the trophies, like only 0.1 and 0.2% of people in the world even have a lot of these trophies that I'm going for so I'm like trying to get them. And uh, you platinum? There's no platinum, unfortunately. Oh, right, that's Which right. is that like r- absurd. Um, but uh, I was like listening to Mega Man 4 Bright Man's music if people want to check it out and then Mega Man 6 Flame Man's music. These are like insanely good songs I I, I I was I don't know I was just blown away by that I forgot like I was like wow this is really good stuff uh, next game would be Castlevania Symphony of the Night uh, I think is essentially the best Metroidvania game by a mile um, which says a lot because I think that there's amazing Metroidvania games in, in the world including like eight other Castlevania games that I think are all nine pluses um, the cool thing about Symphony of the Night I remember getting Symphony of the Night in 1997 it was the second PS1 game I ever bought and I, I, I mowed lawns and shit and like but I didn't know what the hell it was like I, I remember seeing um, it was in PSM and I was kind of like glazing over and then I just saw the box art the box art kind of sucks I don't know if people remember like Symphony of the Night's box art is actually like really bad and uh, it's just like it's very purple yeah it's like, like this is terrible but it's Castlevania and I, I grew up with the exception of Mega Man Castlevania, I was like, especially with the, the lore in that game, and especially with Simon's Quest, which I think is a fantastic uh, game, which I think si- Symphony of the Night kind of draws back to in its own way. Um, I remember getting it and not really knowing what to expect. I expected something like Castlevania 3 or Super Castlevania. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be like, you know, a 3D game, but. And what I got was this non linear, like very strange, very weird game with a guy named Richter in it. And. You play as Alucard, who you haven't played as since Castlevania 3. You can play as him if you find him. And uh, I was I was just blown away by it. And then there's a secret ending. I remember beating the game and, and not knowing that you can fight Richter in a certain way and get this whole other ending where they turn the Castlevania the castle upside down. And what I love about this, and we talked about it on the stream when we when we did our stream, I think, for the animated series, and I played, like, I played the game mm-hmm. extensively. I'm like, what's so fucking cool about it, in hindsight, once you know that the castle inverts, is looking at the design of the entire castle like right side up. The, the, I think that that game more than almost any other game I've ever played has just 
a cute design aesthetic where they're like, we have everything has to work upside, upside down. down, man. Yeah, that's and you crazy. don't and you don't realize until you look at everything like the spires and the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you don't realize that all this shit are plat they're platforms, you know, like. But you just think they're there for fun and, and yeah, like and I'm that game is so cool in that moment. And Konami delivered a lot of those moments on PS1. They delivered it with Metal Gear Solid, with yep. um, uh, you know the 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 Psycho Mantis boss battle and shit like that. Like there's just, but that game, Symphony of the Night is is not only an unparalleled Metro, Metroidvania game and still stands up from a gameplay perspective completely almost 20 years later, but it is gorgeous. In, in an era where we, it's it's expensive to create art like that anymore, like pixel art like that, and, and artists like it's very cumbersome. It takes a long time. It's expensive. That's why even Bloodstained is two point five D. Go look at that game and just marvel at the enemies and how beautiful that game. Like it doesn't get any prettier than that. Um, from that particular aesthetic, yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, next up, Wild Arms, uh, PS one RPG from Media Vision, um, Sony owned IP. Uh, Wild Arms was a game that my brother introduced me to when I was in Philadelphia um, with him 20 years ago. Um, and what I remember him telling me about it was when we were playing, it was like, this game is brutally hard. Like, you can't beat this game without a strategy guide. And he ended up being right. Now, I think some people can figure it out, but there's like really obtuse puzzles and stuff in the game. What I love about it is that it's about a party of three characters. And and we're used to in Japanese role playing games, especially because I like loved Final Fantasy. Um, and even Fantasy Star did this and all this like you're switching characters in and out and and like Final Fantasy 6 which is on this list um, has this massive cast if you find all the like Yumaro and Gogo and stuff the cast gets like really big um, with this it's it's all about Cecilia and Jack and Rudy and that's it and um, the game is just really good I, I love the, 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 the magic system is really cool you find these glyphs and you can like you only have a certain amount of them and you have to like write your magic on them um, so you can only have a certain amount of spells Cool side quest in the game. Cool character development. Um, the music, the intro. If people have never seen the Wild Arms intro, the, the animated intro, song. it is insanely awesome. good. Um, the music's awesome and yeah. the animation's awesome. It's an anime style. It's beautiful. Um, and sets the stage, I think, really nicely for the game. The game's also really dark and uh, really sad. And, there, and I don't want to spoil it because I really do want people to play this game. Um, there's a moment with Rudy uh, late in the game who's the main character who uses these guns called arms. That's what, that's what Wild Arms are. Um, there are these machines basically that, um, like these, they're, they're just firearms. Um, and it's just, I was, I remember not knowing that this particular thing was going to happen. And it's one of the most memorable moments I'd ever had in a video game. Um, to this day, I was so sad when that happened. I was in, I was in eighth grade. Um, it's a really great game. The sequel is really good too, by the way. Mm. Uh, Final Fantasy VI. Well, before you go though, with Wild Arms. So mm. the franchise, there's Wild Arms and there's Wild Arms 2 mm -hmm. on PlayStation 1. one and mm -hmm. then 3 was on PS2. PS2. Mm -hmm. Where to go after that? I think there are five of them. I The last one I played was 3, I think. I might have I might have messed around with 4. I don't really remember. Um, 3 just came out on PS4, actually, um, as a PS2 oh, cool. classic with trophies and stuff. People want to check it out. Uh Media Vision kept making them. That studio still exists. They also remade, I think, the original Wild Arms, I think, on PSP or something like that. But I don't I never played it. Um, it was called like Alter F or something. I don't I don't remember. Uh, really, 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 really good. When people always talk about like they want Legend of Dragoon and all these. I'm like, why? Like Wild Arms shits on that game. And, and what's, <laughs> what's so funny is that like I really do believe in my heart. And I've talked about this with people that Wild Arms would be way bigger if Final Fantasy seven didn't come out later that year. There was not much distance between them. Wild Arms came out, I think, in the spring, and then a few months later, Final Fantasy VII came out, which, and Final Fantasy VII was this marquee title. Final Fantasy VII is great. Um, turned a lot of people on to JRPGs. Still one of the great PS1 games, and I think the reason I actually bought a PS1 was for Final Fantasy VII, so I'm not going to sit here and hate on it, but I do think if there was more distance between those games, I think Wild Arms would be way bigger. Um, I don't understand why more people haven't played it. That's I stand by that game completely. Um, I understand why some other RPGs that I like, like Tales of Destiny and uh, Thousand Arms and stuff, like people don't, don't care as much about those games. I get it, but like, mm -hmm. but that game is really special, and I, I and you can get a PS One Classic. Uh, I think it's like five bucks. Uh, and you can play it on Vita, PSP, PS Three. Final Fantasy VI uh, is next on my list. Uh, I remember buying this game, 1994. I paid like eighty dollars for it. Mm -hmm. It was Final Fantasy. We knew it was Final Fantasy three. Purple box art on SNES. Uh, I bought a, a strategy guide to play it with. That was this bootleg, like uh, unofficial guide that was like really thick, 
and it was based on the Japanese version and it was totally useless. Like no, none of the translations were right of the weapons. <laughs> I still have it. It's like so cool um, to look at it though. Like it's like kind of vaguely, you kind of vaguely know what the hell's going on in the game, but it's like, I don't know what this Where weapon did you is. Pick it up this bootleg version. It was that game, like our EB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like the unofficial, there was like a whole series of these unofficial guides right. and I, there was an official one, I think, but I didn't want it cause this one was way thicker. And so I thought you're the real yeah, shit for an RPG. Yeah, like, give me them stats. I remember my Final Fantasy X guide was like that thick, and it's like why? Yeah, it's like a, not really necessary. Um, better than the Final Fantasy IX guide though, that made you go online and do everything, which I, I'll never. You know, do you remember that? No, like there was yeah. a Final Fantasy IX Prima guide. I think it that was, was like, like all for, pro tip or whatever. Like, yeah, go, it's like online go online. online. It's like online. Everything was online. Was like it, was, cheat. it was a different time. Yeah, ninety nine. The internet was so young. We're and trying to figure out how to use it. Go to our Geo Cities page. Final Fantasy VI's story is really cool, and there's. You see shades of it in in newer games. The, the, for people that don't know, the story is basically about these magical creatures called, and, and they're basically like humans called espers that have these magical uh, these magical abilities that are sealed off in this like other world. Basically, um, there's a guy named Emperor Gestal who's like the king of this or the emperor of this of this empire um, who wants to like utilize them and extract their magic power and basically like conducts a genocide on these people. Um, and seals them away, uh, like basically s- just takes them and makes them into these things called magicite, um, and seal. It's like kind of a violent and kind of fucked up story. And uh, you play in the beginning as this woman named Terra who doesn't have a memory, and she's with and she's in this thing, magic tech armor, which is in Final yeah. Fantasy fifteen. Um, with Biggs and Wedge, who are in a lot of Final Fantasy games, and they're going through a cave, and they meet Locke, who's a thief, and. It goes into this whole thing about how Emperor Gestal is not really the, the worst person. Actually, his like court jester is like a fucking nut job. Kefka, who's who's a, an amazing character. Like, I love Kefka and his laugh mm-hmm. um, is he iconic. Was your PSN icon for a long time. Right? Yeah, yeah, his laugh is in that MIDI format yeah, is iconic. So. If if it, like and, and and people that know know, and if you haven't listened, you should. He appears and you can hear him laughing like when he's off screen or whatever. You know he's gonna show up and stuff like that and. He basically takes it to the nth degree and like and 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 basically destroys the world in the game. And that's what's so cool about it is that the game in the game the world is actually destro- completely destroyed. And you play half of the game in the world of balance and half of the game in the world of ruin, as they call it. And uh, there's a really extensive catalog of characters, memorable characters in this game. Cyan is like the is like the um, is like a fencer basically, and um, Sabin's. Uh, uh, and Edgar are brothers. Edgar uses these things, machines, basically, like a chainsaw and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And Savin uses, like, these martial arts techniques. Gao is, um, uh, basically jumps into enemy parties and disappears for a while. And then when you fight again later, he comes back and knows their, and, like, knows their powers. Um, there's, like, y- you have Realm and Strago, who is, like, a grandfather and a granddaughter. That Strago uses blue magic, which is, like, basically enemy magic. And Realm draws enemies. In the, like, there's, like, really, like... It's so awesome. Yeah. Like it's there's so a lot going on. Yeah, there's like it, there's a lot of deep subsystems that you never have to explore. You never have to even use any like half of these mm-hmm. characters. I love Setzer who has an airship. He's a gambler. So he has these things like that you can do in battle, like where he like basically uses like a slot machine, but they, it can be disastrous. It can actually hurt your party and stuff like that. It's there's I, I it is in my mind the deepest Final Fantasy game by a mile. And and in terms of its systems, in terms of its core systems, because the systems aren't necessarily any deeper than say it's deeper than seven, but like H draw system is pretty deep and like other stuff like that. But there's like a bunch of characters. So, and they all have this unique something. Mm-hmm. this like je ne sais quoi about them. Like, um, even when you get to go, go and Yamaro and all these characters, like later on in the game. And, and, and so, um, and I love the Esper system. I think the magic system is really special. Yeah, and it it, in four, um, Final Fantasy four, which is an awesome game. The magic is learned by the end by the characters like, uh, Cecil or, whoever's ready or whatever, like based on the level that they reach. But, and in five, it's class based, based on the classes you equip. And in six, use espers, use the espers, the magicite that you find and equip them on yourself. And then you learn the spells attached to that esper based on action points they're earning in battle. So like you can have an esper that says like fire times five, which means you have to get 20 action points to learn it. Um, to get to 100%. And then you can unequip it and you'll always know fire. So you mm-hmm. can like have white mages and black mages and gray mages and all these kinds of things if you want. Or you can teach the magic to everyone and customize the characters exactly how you want. It is a super deep game. And while I appreciate um, uh, the materia system and all that kind of stuff, n- none of these games have anything in any respect on Final Fantasy VI in my mind. That is a fantastic game. You have got to play it if the you haven't played it. Scene. 
The opera. There's an opera scene in a Super Nintendo game. It's so the opera scene. I don't even want to spoil the story. If, if people are gonna, the opera scene is really important in the game. It's a it's a bait and switch on Setzer, and and it gets Setzer involved with your party because he has an airship and you need it. Um, and that is an I. That's why I want to see Final Fantasy VI remade in, in some respect one day yeah. because that scene is super sad and emotional, and you and can feel Setzer too. And like, is really it's it's hours long, and you can feel Setzer's pain actually in that like as well, like that he like longs for this woman and. But he really shouldn't and stuff. That's also when you meet Ultros, who's like like the weird octopus. Well, you meet, you met him earlier in the game, but you meet him again, and he's like this weird octopus character yeah. that like doesn't serve any purpose really. It's so just, after everything you've heard about the remake for Final Fantasy VII, you trust him to go back and remake this game that's on your top well, seven no, list? I, I I think it's totally different though. I mean, they've done such a good job with the remakes for like four on the yeah on, four was good with the chibi kind of characters and yeah, stuff like that. And, yeah. But I think that that could and it was work. harder. I think that could work for six. I don't think we'll ever get a Final Fantasy VII remake. Style I thought they were going to six. do. I thought the idea was that they were going to do four, five, and six, but they never. They well, never. There's been so many ideas they did three and over four. the days of these. But what's what's super awesome is there's rumors of an NX. Uh, remake of six, which that would just Fine. blow my mind. Fine. That would be so, so, Fine. so awesome. It's such a huge I'll win take for it. Them. Six is. You can take it with you anywhere on the road at the end. Oh, JRPG fans out there, especially younger ones or people that just didn't have PS or SNES, Wild Arms and Final Fantasy Six. You have to play these games. Uh, and then uh, the last two are newer games. Uh, Bioshock um, is phenomenal. Uh, great story. Um, people are always questioning why I like this game because it kind of is. I like Ayn Rand, and I, I I'm interested in libertarianism, and it's about a libertarian and like a super Ayn Rand like uh, objectivist society that has completely run amok. Kind of making not making fun of it, but talking like this is like kind of a cautionary tale about what happens when, you know, you have this kind of situation going on. I'm like, I don't care. Like, it's a it's an awesome idea. I think it's a super deep game. I think it's dark. I think it's dire. Rapture is one of the great settings in video game history, um, and it's contained and claustrophobic, and I like the backtracking in the game, and I like I like revisiting areas. The big daddies are cool. They're fucking scary. If you don't mess with them, they don't mess with you. The second you mess with them, they go Fuck berserk. You up. Yeah. Um, and you have to like figure out clever ways to deal with them with your plasmids and all this kind of stuff. So um, I'm super excited that the Bioshock collection is coming out this fall because I real and I, I platinum Bioshock, the original Bioshock on PS3, but I'm gonna go balls deep in that game again. You gonna platinum it again? You think? I think so. It's not that hard. It just takes the time. Vita chamber. Right? Yeah, you That's can't die basically. Yeah. You have to play it on hard. But um, so I really feel like that game deserves all the accolades it's gotten and yeah. more. And I and people ask why I don't like Bioshock Infinite. In fact, when we were at the uh, Denver podcast uh, doing it there Road to for Road to Greatness, we uh, someone asked like why didn't I like Infinite? And I'm like, just put these two games together. Like I had expectations that were not met at all. By, based on the original Bioshock, which is a first-person shooter in a way, but not really, and or survival horror in a way, yeah, right? Just the audio diaries and the it's just it's a creepy profoundly ass creepy weird game. Yeah. Um, highly recommended. And the final one is The Last of Us. Um, Never heard of it. Which uh, we, I mean, how much more can we say about The Last of Us? It's a uh, Super character driven uh, dystopian, which I like um, in case people out there don't know. It's like one of my obsessions in fiction, um, but I think grounded dystopia. I think it's super sad. I think the intro is fucking devastatingly sad, and I think yep. it sets the so uh, the somber tone to the, for the game. Um, and, uh, you know, mechanically, it, you know, it leaves something to be desired for some people. I get that. I think mechanically it's awesome. I think you feel every death. I think that you the game makes you think about what you're doing. The game makes you not want to even kill. Um, because I think it's so gory and gruesome when you do the, you know, killing the clickers is one thing, but killing choking the, a man, having choking, a claw at your arm, seeing his eyes. Yeah, there's out something about that game. that's really, and, and the father daughter relationship that's set up in the beginning of the game that then translates into Joel and Ellie. Um, the last of us is, uh, profoundly, you know, it's not profoundly anything. It's profound. That game is, that game is somehow Naughty Dog did better than uncharted. And while was, I think uncharted four is an exceptional game and the best uncharted game, I still think the last of us is better. And um, I'm really looking forward to see what they do with it because I think inevitably we're going to get a sequel. And I, I'm I'm just curious about what how they how they're going to proceed. But um, I really story. really really love that game, and I want to give a shout out to its multiplayer too, which I spent 40 hours with, which is unbelievable. I don't think I played a multiplayer game on the line for 40 hours combined. Mm -hmm. All the other games, this particular game, I just was so into, and I was actually really good at it, which was surprising. Like I'm usually, you know, we all, we all get a little turned off play Rocket League people are way too good and it's not fun anymore like I was maybe one of those people when I was playing The Last of Us sometimes to other people because I just was so throwing in your nail bombs I was so into it I knew the maps and I I, I just skulked around and just was patient and 
And there was something, there was something, there was something very different about that compared to the bro shooters or the military shooters that a lot of people play, where you're just running around maps and, and sniping people and dying a million times in a you know match or killing a million times in a match. Like you earn every death, you earn every kill. Um, getting away from someone in that game feels so good. You know, um, making your bandage in the corner to like sure, try to heal yourself sure. and hoping no one's coming around the corner. And uh, I remember specifically getting a perk that when you kneel down and move, no one can see you on the map, which is like kind of game breaking. And and uh, so, yeah, those are my games. Those are my seven games. And I think I'm, I'm proud of that list. But again, that and I, I, looking at the list, I'm not sure if there were games that were going to be swapped off this list. It would it would it would probably be the newer ones for something else. But I don't know what they would be right now. Mm.